I'm Alex Galt, a math teacher at Edina High School. Today is about multiplying polynomials. I'm going to introduce you to polynomial tiles, um, and then after that we'll expand to what we call the box method, which is still a way of visualizing um, polynomials, but without having a physical manipulative. By the end of today, you should be able to multiply polynomials, either with tiles or on paper. If you're taking advanced algebra at Edina High School, you should be given a package of algebra tiles to use in the classroom. Um, algebra tiles are set up to represent x squared, x's, and units, or ones. Um, they're also set up to rep represent positive and negatives. Um, all of our algebra tiles are two-sided, so if you flip, flip them over, they'll be red. Those represent negative numbers. So the, the red side is negative, and then the other side represents positives. The big squares are x squared blocks, the skinny rectangles are x blocks, and the little squares are 1 blocks. So if you have your bag of algebra tiles um, and you need to represent negative 3x plus 5x, 5x would be um, 5 of the skinny rectangles. Negative 3x would be 3 of the skinny rectangles, but turned over to the red side. And what happens when you have negative and positive tiles, as long as you can make a pair, those cross each other out. So if you have a positive 1x and a negative 1x, those go away. So this is one way of representing the idea that negative 3x plus 5x is equal to 2x. Okay. Um, think about how you would make uh, this polynomial using your tiles. Um, if you have a bag of tiles, go ahead and do it. If you don't have a bag of tiles, at least think about what it would look like. Um, and what it would look like is you'd have two of the square tiles, the big squares. You'd have three of the skinny rectangles, but they'd be turned over to the red side because they're negative. And you'd have one unit or small square tile. Um, the way we use tiles to add polynomials is we build each polynomial first and then we add what we call like terms or when it's tiles we add shapes that are the same. So if I want to build 3x plus 1 I would have three skinny rectangles that have one uh, unit block and then if I want to have x squared minus 2x plus 4 I'd have an x squared block, two red um, x blocks and then four ones and then I look for like terms. Um, when we add polynomials, we like to put the answer in what's called standard form, which means we put the biggest exponent first. So I have one of these x squared blocks, so my answer would be x squared. And then, um, sorry, these blocks will cancel, so I'll just have plus one x block, and then I have four plus one, so I would have five ones. The tiles help you remember that you don't get to add 3x and 2x and get x squared. They still have the same shape. Um, they, that's how we add. We add like terms. Or with tiles, we add things that have the same shape. Um, we're next going to use algebra tiles to multiply polynomials. And what you do when you're multiplying polynomials is you think of area. Um, so 2x plus 1 will be one dimension, and x plus 3 will be the other dimension. So I chose to make 2x plus 1 be the height of my rectangle. So I built the polynomial 2x plus 1, which means I had two skinny um, x blocks and one unit block. And then for the width of my rectangle, I made it x plus 3. So x, one skinny x blocks, and then three unit blocks. And then with tiles, I'm going to try to fill in this area without leaving any gaps. And that will be the answer to my multiplication problem, because length times width will give me the area. And when I fill in that area, I wind up with 2x squared blocks. Then I wind up with 6x plus 1, so 7x blocks. And then I wind up with 3 1 blocks. I have to build the area without any gaps, and it's kind of a nice pattern is that we wind up with our x squared blocks in the upper, lo upper left-hand corner. We wind up with our 1's blocks in the lower right-hand corner, and then we have x's kind of in two corners. So we wind up with x's here and here, and we combine those. Um, so that pattern holds if we are careful when we use our algebra tiles. 
So I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to try this um, algebra tile problem. So build one dimension 2x, the other dimension 2x plus 1, and then try to fill in the rectangle so you can figure out what that area is. Um, here's my 2x. Here's my 2x plus 1. And so then I'm going to try to fill in this area here. Um, and when I do that, I wind up with 4x squared and 2x's. And I didn't have any 1's blocks down here because I didn't have any 1's here. So usually it happens that you wind up with some 1, blo one blocks, but you didn't in this case. Um, I just want to point out that a lot of you already know how to distribute. So if you're distributing, that'd be 4x squared plus 2x. But it also works with the algebra tiles. Um, here's another one to try, um, 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. Try that with your tiles and then pause the video and then unpause it when you feel like you have the answer. So here's 3x minus 1. Notice that I made that tile red because it was negative. And here's 2x plus 3. And then if I'm filling in this area, I'm going to try to have my x squared blocks up here my 1's blocks down here, and then I'll have x's here and here. So what that looks like is it looks like um, I have 6x squared, and I have um, 9x minus 2x, so plus 7x, and then minus 3, because those are red tiles. Um, so that's using the area and the blocks to make um, the product of two polynomials. I'm going to show you the box method for multiplying as well. This method still thinks about area, but you don't have to have a manipulative to, to multiply using the box method. Okay. The box method of multiplying polynomials um, is similar to using tiles, except we don't represent everything the way we do with tiles. Instead, we say this is a binomial. It has two terms. So along the edge, we're going to have two rows. And this is also a binomial, so we are also going to have two columns. Um, the height is going to be x plus 9. Since it's positive, I don't have to write a negative sign in front of it or a positive sign. You can if you want to. Um, and then 3x and 5. And actually, you can put the 3x plus 5 on the side, or you can put it along the top. You just have to have x plus 9 as one dimension, and 3x plus 5 as the other dimension. And then for each of your boxes, you're going to find the area of that box. So 3x times x would be 3x squared, because x times x is x squared. 9 times 3x would be 27x. 5 times x would be 5x. And then in this box, we're going to do 5 times 9, which is 45. What happens if you do the box method to multiply is you're going to have like terms along the diagonal. So when you write your final answer, you want to write that in standard form. So you'd write 3x squared plus um, 32x plus 45 as your product when you're done. You can also do negative numbers when you're doing the box method to multiply. Um, you just have to keep close attention to your signs. This is going to be a 2 by 2 box because 2x minus 3 is a binomial. And x minus 8 is a binomial. So notice how I'm keeping the negative sign with the term that it goes with. And then when I find my area, it's going to be 2x squared. And then negative 3 times x, so negative 3x, and negative 8 times 2x, so negative 16x, and then negative 8 times negative 3, so positive 24. And then our like terms, again, are on the diagonal. So then we write in standard form, 2x squared minus 19x plus 24. Notice how it fits the same pattern as it did with our tiles. We have our x squared tiles in the upper left. We have our 1's in the lower right. And then we have our x's along the sides. When you use the box method to multiply polynomials, you're not restricted to just a binomial times a binomial. Um, this, has, this polynomial has three terms, 2x squared, negative 4x, and positive 3, which means that when I do the box method to multiply this these polynomials together, I'm going to have a 3 by 2 box. 
So my height will be 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. My width will be 2x plus 5. And then I want to find the area of each of those boxes. So this would be 4x to the third, negative 8x squared, and 6x, and then 10x squared, and negative 20x, and 15. And then as I look for like terms, again, I see those on the diagonal. So here's a, like, here's a set of like terms, and here's a set of like terms. So when I write my final answer, I like it to be in standard form. So I'm going to write 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 14x plus 15. And that's just an order of exponents from biggest exponent to smallest exponent. Okay. I hope you have some idea now how to multiply polynomials together. Um, in the beginning, it's helpful to have tiles, but as you get more comfortable, the box method works just as well as tiles, and it actually gives you some freedom to have more dimensions and also not to have to count out so many tiles.